Hello, lacrosse friends. Welcome to the Oshawa General Motors Center. I'm Stephen Stamp, joined by Pat Gregoire, and we will be bringing you tonight's Canadian Lacrosse League action between the hometown Durham Turf Dogs and the visiting Southwest Cyclops. There's a lot on the line tonight. The Cyclops, two and five, they're in dire situation if they don't win tonight. If they win, they're right in the thick of things, and there is still a scenario where we could have all five teams finish five and five. Not likely. A lot of specific stuff has to happen, but there's a lot still up in the air coming into the second last week of the season. Yeah, absolutely, and that's kind of the, the beauty of having a smaller league, whereas, you know, if you do get caught back a little bit at the start of the year, if you do collect those wins, next thing you know, you're right back into things. So uh, no doubt tonight it's a huge game for Southwest, and, I mean, even if you look at the Turf Dogs, uh, oh, with yeah. a win tonight, they now are tied with Barry Blizzard. So Exactly, and with a loss tonight, they've got the Cyclops nipping at their heels, and they play again next weekend. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a big game for Durham. It, it looked when they won three straight games, all the home games, it looked like they were really on a bit of a roll, then they lose three straight games all on the road, all very close. Um, I think when this Durham team is on their game, I think they're as good as anybody in the league, but you can say the same about most of the teams in the league, really. Absolutely, for sure. And, I mean, you do look at uh, the Durham Turf Dogs, a couple of big losses uh, with Jesse Guerin to injury, mm -hmm. and then Thomas Hogarth going up to the NLL, which is, you know, at the end of the day, this is a developmental league, yeah. so it is good to see. But I know the Durham Turf Dogs, that's a lot of points coming off the board there. Well, the thing is, Jesse Guerin is your offensive facilitator. He's also uh, doing a great job killing penalties and things yeah. for them. I mean, playing such solid defense. He's so smart that he does things, and so aware, he does things that you don't hardly even notice until you almost stop and think about it. And he did so much for them. And then Hogarth stepped up big time oh my gosh, when, when Kieran left and was leading the team in scoring. All of a sudden, he's off to play defense in Vancouver with the Stealth, which is, again, great for him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Pete Rennie goes up to the New England Black Wolves. Uh, how long he's going to be there is hard to say because they've got Andrew Suter and Mike McNamara coming back soon mm -hmm. off of knee injuries. So his time with New England is probably limited. I'm sure they'd love to have him back. But they've been so banged up. They've got a bunch of new guys in the lineup. Uh, they've got Travis Zabolts they picked up from yep. Barry will be wearing number 66. They've got Brandon Armstrong and Brendan Monroe have been added. Derek Hopcroft is back. Uh, you know, they've got a lot of new guys. Uh, yeah, Tim Bergen is back. He's played one game with yep. them, and he's, he. I mean, he's had a huge couple seasons in Senior B, so a lot of changes which can help, but it, it's hard at this point in the season to just mix them in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you could tell just looking out on the floor during warm-up, just even, you know, visually it's a different yeah. team, so we're, we're going to have to definitely take an eye and see if this team can gel early, but there are some some names in this lineup that, you know, Dylan Goddard, for example, yeah. you know, he's had himself a, a solid season, 28 points so far on the year. So, you know, it, but it'll be interesting to see if he can still continue the same thing without Hogarth and Garen in the lineup. Yeah, the pressure kind of increases when you've got to take more of the role. But Tim Bergen, I think, will help with that. I think Travis Zabolt, who had led Owen Sound in Senior B last year, last summer in scoring, can make a big difference. It's interesting because he, he didn't play for a bit for Barry, then got into a game and looked really tentative for the first half of his first game and then start, you could just see him getting more and more comfortable. And I talked to him afterwards and he said, absolutely, I was so nervous. <laughs> and then he got a hat trick in that game. Yeah. He can shoot. Oh yeah. And he was looking really comfortable by the end. So he, he can bring them some help. Um, Derek Hopcroft, who hasn't had a chance to play much this year, is a huge addition. Um, what I mean, he's played three games, he's got nine points, but he can do so much for a team, again, all over the floor. Oh, absolutely, and he's you know he's such a threat offensively. He's got that outside rip, so it just changes a dynamic as a defense. Now you've got Hawkrop in the lineup. The defense are definitely going to have to key in on mm. him. And, you know, Southwest, they've really struggled to keep the ball out of the net this year, yeah. and that's not really a knock against their, you know, their defense or goaltending, but mm. they do, they, you know, they're going to have to tighten it up, and tonight's going to be another test with this new look Durham Turf Dogs offense. Yeah, it absolutely is. And you, you've got to think that Southwest also is trying to find ways to make the the offense click. Dan Keen and Jordan Dance have been outstanding mm -hmm. for them. They're really tough to stop. But we were talking before, you can kind of let them have their 10 points between them. And if you shut everybody else down, which has been happening fairly, fairly consistently, 
they don't have a lot else that's really happening. We're going to uh, we're going to be going to the national anthem shortly, but we'll talk till uh, till they're ready to go with that. But Southwest has to find something from some other guys, and it was interesting watching the uh, the penalty kill and the power play working in the warm up. They're just running through guys through the PK. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to go down for the national anthem. We'll be back for the game. Welcome back, lacrosse friends. We are just about ready to get underway with Canadian Lacrosse League action brought to you by JBI Sports Network. I'm Stephen Stamp, joined by Pat Gregoire. Our first chance to actually call as play-by-play and color. <laughs> yeah, Pat, I know. You're doing some, uh, some sideline reporting and things, and uh, it's, it's, I'm excited. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I can't wait. You know, last time uh, we were together, Kufla Championships, I was on the sideline, and mm -hmm. I'm glad there's a roof over my head because I think the one game I was covered just absolutely soaked. So it's that nice to be inside. A cold weekend in November. <laughs> yeah. Graham Bergsman heading out for the faceoff. He was picked up by this team partway through the season after Barry let him go. He, uh, or sorry, Niagara let him go. He just got into the one game mm -hmm. and wasn't very good. I talked to him um, about it afterwards and said, yeah, you looked... Um, a little nerd, like a little, you're trying to get your feet back under you. you were, uh, uh, he goes, I was awful. I'm like, that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> yeah. But he's definitely been getting better every game. He is a prototypical Sealax player who can play either end Absolutely. of the floor. And, um, and he is just waving all his guys back into the defensive side for the faceoff. He'll be going up against Patrick McCrory. Bergsma, who was a uh, an ace faceoff guy in the NCAA and he pulls it out, but it looks like it's going to be... Oh, everyone's just going to keep fighting for it. Nobody can pick it up. They are battling hard for that first possession. Nobody's had it yet. And eventually, McCrory gets it himself. Jacob Kranz all over him. The turf dogs will start up the floor. Bounce pass gets away from Travis Zaboltz. Nice job getting Zaboltz's name on his jersey already. The shot just misses. The big man picked up from Barry in a trade after those. these Barry and Durham had a contentious weekend home-and-home -home series. Uh, you you talk about Graham's Bergma, you know, he, you, he's exactly that. He's that, you know, all-around player. He's not going to blow you away with any offensive, crazy offensive talents, but he will chip in as well. There's Blair Goss up playing offense. There's another guy who's more of a defensive guy, and they actually had Bergman in the power play during the warm-up for a bit, so, you know, they're looking for whatever they can get from their contributions around. And there's Derek Hopcroft not quite accepting the pass from Dylan Goddard. Look for that combination to be working together all night long. John St. John on his offside, gives it up, heads over to his own side. McNulty gives it up. There's Goddard's shot off the crossbar. Had, had uh, Grant Crawley fooled. I don't think Crawley saw that at all. Now Goddard goes to Hopcroft. Shot saved by Crawley, who was ready for that one. A long outlet pass is gonna be picked off though. Nice job by Goddard to hustle back and take that one away, and they're going right back to the offense. Yeah, Durham wasting no time moving the ball around here. They're definitely playing in an up-tempo st style of offense. Hopcroft rips that pass across, gets it back. He's going to shoot, stopped by Crawley. Hopcroft was one of the hardest shots you will see in the cross, oh, yeah. and that pass was probably harder than most people shoot. <laughs> yeah. Eric Petrie running down the floor. That cannot be Eric Petrie. It's Spencer Pike. They just don't have, <laughs> they still have the Petrie name on there. <laughs> yeah. So 44 is Spencer Pike. There's a pass across by Sabolts, and the shot 
is stopped off the stick of Nevin Sullivan. They're battling for the ball behind the net. They get it away from the big defender and uh, get the ball back. If first penalty is coming, Durham's going to be on the power play unless they can score here. The Bolts will shoot offside. It's scooped up. And Durham goes to the first power play. It looks like Southwest playing like a team really desperate for win, a uh, win, but just really forcing the ball. We saw two really bad turnovers. And when a defense gets caught out there, do, they do get tired, and they tend to take a penalty, and that's exactly what just happened on that play there. Yeah, you start chasing, and, and you get behind. You have to use your stick more mm -hmm. than your feet. Reed Board is heading off. It's a high sticking call. And Durham will move it around the outside for now. Now they start to try and cut through. That pass skips away from Cody McMahon. He's pushed down from behind by Jake Kranz. And Durham will get the ball back in a fresh 30. Goddard is up top. He's going to go down low to McNulty. That pass gets away from Hopcroft. But again, Goddard is there to stop the ball from going over center. It is an over and back rule at center in Selex. Nice pass by McNulty. Fake by Hopcroft, goes up to Goddard. It's knocked out again and again. Durham gets it back. Oh, and that is a tough break for Southwest. It was called possession. Oh, and they are gonna, they're gonna call it, I think somebody threw the crease, which was a makeup call. Yeah, absolutely. They missed it. The, here's Dance. Oh, first goal of the game, Jordan Dance beats Lucas Coote. Coote was terrific for much of last week's game in, in Barry, but Jordan Dance all alone, and he's tough to stop. Yeah, absolutely, especially when you get in tight there. You know, Coote has no chance on this one, just, you know, a beautiful move. And like you said, when, when you get a, such a skilled player like Jordan Dance, you can see him here coming in all alone, just a fake. Puts it low, and it looks like Coop might actually even had a little bit of a piece on it there. He got some of it, but it just goes in off the the post. Bergsma wins that face off to himself. Farthing all over him. Farthing's the man who was chasing Dance coming off the bench, but Dance was wide open. And boy, Durham controlling play. Stem to Stern and almost going down 2-0. The shorthanded goal by Dance. Durham finally getting the ball back up over center. Jake Kranz jumps out and Brandon Armstrong steps over center. That is just a a, a, a bit of a boneheaded yeah. mistake. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta give credit to this Southwest uh, yeah. penalty kill. Doing a fine job last there, getting their sticks in the lane. Here comes a break. Nice job though by Dance to get back and avoid the breakaway by McMahon. There's Goddard going to the net. He is so dangerous, but Crawley saw that one all the way. Yeah, the way Goddard shoots, though, he doesn't, he doesn't blow you away with a hard shot. Oh, here they come the other way. The pass from Keenan and the shot just stopped off a gauge board. Board so active and dynamic in the offensive zone. Not a huge finisher. Boy, if he had the hands of Dan Keen, <laughs> he'd score 30, 40 goals a year in this league. Absolutely. There's Keen running behind the net. Lots of time left on the, on the shot clock, and they get the man out of the box. Board gives it off to Dance, who scores! Skips one through from the outside, and it is 2-0 Southwest. This is exactly the start that, uh, this is the, exactly the start that Southwest was looking for. I mean, off the hop, you know, those few turnovers, taking mm -hmm. the penalty. But after that, you know, they really got that spark from that penalty kill, yeah. you know, with Jones Smith knocking down a ball, Spanger now knocking down a ball, yeah. Kranz really high pressure. Next thing you know, you look up the clock, and they're up 2-0. Yeah, and it was a big call when they did, the refs did call through yes. the crease, and it, and it was a good call mm -hmm. because the ball was not possessed yeah. by Southwest. There shouldn't have been a reset, and uh, that would have been, a, it's tough when you kill a 30-second clock. And there's a penalty coming. That's the ball. It's a check from behind on Jordan Dance. It looks like the Turf Dogs will pick up the ball. It's Ryan McCrory come up with it, and now the Bolts will go off to the penalty box. And Southwest, who were absolutely dominated for the first two and a half to three minutes, are up 2 nothing, and go to the power play. Yeah, exactly. That's what you mean. <laughs> that first two minutes, it was just all turf dogs, but a couple little breaks here and there come for Southwest, and next thing you know, they're leading. We talked about you know the dynamic of this offense, so definitely look to see Dan Keen quarterback this offense for Southwest. Yeah, they're going heavy right, the three righties. They actually spent most of their practice warm-up time with three lefties out there. Gage Board's gonna shoot. That one's stopped by Coot. 
Ball is loose and it's picked up by Dance, a fresh 30. Keen taking his time. He can score from up there. You can see how it's drawing the Durham defense out. Nice pickup by Corbett. Had to use his body as that took a funny bounce off the boards and then a bounce off his shoulder, but he tracked it down. Keen fakes behind the back, goes to Dance. He is leveled just as he was getting that pass. Nice job by Board to step in and get the shot off after picking up that loose ball. Board gets it back. He's going to fire. No, a pass. Great fake <laughs> over to Corbett, but Coot moves quickly across. Fresh 34, the Cyclops. Dan Keen moving it over. Keen gets it back at the top, a little flip behind his back. Hesseltine will give it back to him. Corbett's down there waiting. Dance to Board. Good movement by the Cyclops, and that is one of the keys for them, trying to get everyone involved. It's picked up, but they get it back. Uh, Brendan Monroe just couldn't hang on to that one. That's real good pressure by this power play to you know, get that ball back. And a really tired penalty kill. I guess especially the guys up top are having to chase. It's Armstrong and Sullivan. There's a shot that misses by Board, and Durham's gonna run the ball up the floor. And, I'm not, and Nevin Sullivan is stripped. I was gonna say, I'm not sure where he's getting the energy, and apparently he <laughs> didn't have it. Southwest gets it back. 15 left on the power play. We'll see what they do. They've got some time to get a shot off if they want. You just gotta be careful. Not that Sabolts is a, is a yeah, speedster <laughs> coming out of the box, but you don't wanna leave him alone up the floor. They're gonna wait until he comes out so they don't risk a ball bouncing out. Sabolts comes back in to play defense. The shot by Corbett goes wide. Nice job keeping it out of the Durham bench by Gage Board, but they're going to run out of time on the shot clock. That's the type of hustle, hustle play you'll see Gage Bork made all the time. Mm. You know, you, you mentioned he, he, he brings so much to the table, and that's one thing. And you see him go play D down right now, and he's no slouch on defense at all either. Oh, he can play in his own end. <laughs> nice quickness. McCrory gets away from the boards, hangs on to the ball. Hopcroft with 18 left on the shot clock. St. John looking for the shot. He's loading up. St. John, who had 92 points last year in his last season of Junior A. Oh, and Hopcroft misses on the far side. Just four seconds left on the shot clock, but it is picked up by Board. That's a long shift for him. Very he's gonna long. look to get off the floor. He's trapped over on the far side, and now he's tripped up by Mark Vradenberg. I think the Cyclops wanted a bit of a tripping call, but there's a save by Coot. It's gonna bounce out and Jake Kranz will try and track it down. A sprint though. St. John leaves his stick behind and Pike picks it, picks it up, heads down the floor. Dance, shoots a little bit wide. Would be over and back, but they're okay. We'll be taking the official's timeout when there's a call and it's gonna be taken, they're gonna call, it, it actually got under the turf, so they're gonna have a face off at mid floor. <laughs> And we should be taking the officials' time out. I think uh, Brent Clome in the box is reminding them. So we will take a break. We'll be back. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire bringing you Canadian Lacrosse League action.
Well, welcome back, Lacrosse friends, inside the Durham Motor Center in Oshawa. Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire, and we will have a face-off after the ball got caught along the boards. So is Bergsman and Mercury once again, two to nothing, Southwest, and they're really starting to impose their will on the turf dogs. Durham really needs to get something rolling. They've had stretches this season. They've had some slow starts and they've had stretches where they just haven't been able to get things rolling. But uh, they've done a pretty decent job of avoiding long stretches. Bergen gets the ball back here. We'll see what he can do. I haven't seen too much of him yet so far. He makes the pass across. Nice movement, but stepping in the crease was Cody McMahon. Spanger's looking up the floor, the Cyclops captain. Has to slow things down, but you can see Southwest will look to run the ball at every opportunity. Dan Keene takes it, Goddard watching him. Slips by, throws it back, and there's the shot by Jones Smith. And that one bounces well up over the net. He missed that by <laughs> quite a bit. Yeah, he looked down at his stick there. Might have hooked a little bit, but definitely not a take. I think uh, the coaching staff's going to want him taking. That's early in the shot clock. There's a say, no, they're going to say it didn't touch the stick of Crawley, so only 14 left on the stick on the shot clock for Durham. McNulty takes one, Pike comes up with it, and now Crawley will just scoop the ball up off the floor. Southwest defense doing a really good job getting out to hands, really, like you said, imposing their will. There's a shot from the outside, nice stop on the Cody Ward shot, and Farthing will move it forward. Farthing runs into the double team. Started to run right by it. Blair Kostrick and Knight's angle to take him away and we'll get the offense out for the Turf Dogs. St. John running high. Board out on him. Nice pick by McNulty. He rolls to the middle, but, or sorry, Vradenberg. Turf Dogs, or Cyclops head the other way. Brady Hesseltine. We've got some numbers. See who's open. That's Corbin, he rings it off the post. Now St. John heads the other way, he's one on one. St. John spin move, nice play, shoots oh. it just over the top of the net. Oh, and it's picked up by Gage Board or Durham would have had another chance. Here comes Southwest right away. Patrick Corbett takes the pass. McCrory on him, tries to go by. McCrory gets one hand off the stick, but doesn't hold on. Big hit by Hopcroft in the defensive zone. It's a great defensive slide by Hopcroft there yeah. to you know, save a good offensive chance for Southwest. There's a shot from the outside. That one skips by, only four left for Southwest to get one. It is six to two for Niagara over the Oswegan Demons down in Niagara tonight. You can see that on Sealax TV one. I'm pretty sure you can go picture in picture, can't you? <laughs> I, I think, think you so. can. I think you can. Yeah. Stay with us here, but you know, go check that one out now and then. Got to share the love. Yeah, we're happy to have you along with us here. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire. Penalty coming to Durham. Grant Crawley sprints to the bench. It's picked up by the Turf Dogs, Dylan Goddard. And it's going to be a holding call in the offensive zone. And boy, Matt Giles, the head coach, will not be happy with a holding call Absolutely by, Mar by uh, Patrick McCrory. A long way, or sorry, Ryan McCrory, a long way from his own net. Yeah, that's, that's an absolute nightmare for, for coaches. It's a penalty that you don't need to take, and uh, especially when you're down 2 nothing with a team like Southwest that has been surging, and their offense has looked really good, especially on this power play. They've had a couple of really good chances. And coaches will say, and, and it seems strange that it makes a difference, but the type of penalty does seem to make a difference in how well you can kill it. Yep. You take those bad penalties, they seem to come back and bite you. Maybe you just notice more. Moving the ball around the perimeter. Some cutters in the middle. There's a jump shot. They get it down low. Hard shot by Keen. The rebound by Dance, and he's stopped by Coot. That was a great second save. Now the outlet pass to Wasson. He can't quite catch it. Runs into the crease, so he can't pick up the ball. But Crawley had it anyway. Here come the Cyclops. Wasson's got to run back. Here comes a shot by the Cyclops, and it's jumped on by Mark Farthing. The Did captain's going right, to run it right along the boards. Nice pass to Hopcroft. Here come the Turf Dogs. Hopcroft driving to the net. Oh, what a goal. <laughs> Getting up into the air, not coming down before he tucks it home. Derek Hopcroft, that's a beauty. It's not a penalty shot, which would be an even easier chance. We say that because Go Abrams has just topped two consecutive <laughs> penalty shots. But here is Derek Hopcroft with a beauty. Yeah, I mean, the, the play right there where he looks back, making it look like he's going to pull it out. 
But no, he takes it to the hole and makes a beautiful, beautiful move. And like you said, just the awareness to keep his toes out of the crease there is just brilliant. And the key, if you're used to watching summer lacrosse in, uh, say, MSL, the difference there is it's a cylinder. If your feet go over mm -hmm. the cylinder, it's no goal. But uh, this is more like the NLL winter rule, where as long as you don't touch down before the ball goes in, you're okay. Mm -hmm. So it's two to one, shorthanded goal for Durham. We've had one for each side. Dance, who had the Cyclops, is up top. He shoots, saved by Luke Kudu, seeing the ball better than he was earlier, although you can't really blame him for the early goals. That one bounces high off the boards. Nice little spin by McMahon, but the ball was snagged by Crawley, and McMahon was going right where that ball was coming. He would have had a wide open look, but Southwest back to the other end on the power play. Keen gives it up to Board. Keen steps up top. Dance gets it from him. He'll shoot a low skipper, stopped by Coot, and just rolls out. Farthing is there to pick it up. Just five left on the penalty to the turf dog. So they're going to come up. St. John wants the ball. Oh, that's a bad pass. In, and I think uh, McCrory's eyes just got a little big when he saw St. John open. Corbett comes in. What a save by Coot as Corbett split the D. McCrory trying to pick it up now. Lucas Coot just having a solid start after you said a little bit of a slow start, now picking it back up. But, you know, you say your best penalty killer is usually yeah. your, your goalie, and that's definitely the case so far tonight. We are back to even strength as Connor Daly takes the ball. Daly, a real speedster, coming out to play in the offensive zone, more of a transition guy, but has some stick skills. That pass bouncing away, nice tight defense by the Turf Dogs, and off they come the other way. Bergen is the guy to watch. And there he gets it, shoots, saved by Crawley. And boy, he got a bit of a break, went off the inside of the foot. Tim Bergen trying to find his way back into uh, game sharpness. Like I said, he's had a couple of seasons in senior B, two years ago, 101 points in like a 14 game season. <laughs> he's gonna rip it. Crawley's all over that one though. He hasn't quite got the shot dialed in and Goddard gets it back for the Turf Dogs. Goes low, nice save by Crawley on the diving St. John. Both these goalies trying to outdo themselves right now with some big, big saves. We're down to our final minute of play in the first quarter, and it's a goal. A nice quick release. And finding the back of the net. I'm not even sure who it is yet. Is that Cody Ward? It is. Cody Ward, the catch and release, and, and that's a nice one to get the momentum back. Yeah, absolutely, and that's, once again, we look at it, Jordan Dance, you know, Turf Dogs are so aware and so focused on looking at, at Jordan Dance because he's been dangerous all year, and then Corey Ward just kind of sneaks out the back all alone, and you give a guy like Corey Ward an open look like that, he's going he's gonna to make you pay. Yeah, I mean, Coop moving across the net just wasn't there in time, but you can just see Ward was left all alone, and uh, Durham, like you said, focused on Dance, but, I mean, I know he's scored quite a bit this year, but I think he's a more dangerous passer than Ab shooter. Yeah, absolutely. So you've got to be looking everywhere. It's tough when you get your head turned and somebody gets that quick first step going, as Ward did. It's 3-1. to one. And Spanger's out there playing some offense. There's a shot from the outside by Board. Rebound scooped up easily by McCrory. He's looking for the outlet. Oh, it doesn't quite hit a Hopcroft. Hopcroft having a little trouble receiving passes today. The first one was a tough one. That mm -hmm. one I thought was pretty much right there. Yeah, that was definitely right in the back pocket. And, you know, sometimes you see the ball and you think you already got it and you're thinking about what kind of move you're yeah. going to do on the goalie and you forget to catch the ball. Eight seconds to go. Keen takes a look and passes it over. Not pulling the goalie. They're just going to let one fly from the outside. And that will do it for the first quarter. It's three to one for the Southwest Cyclops over the Durham Turf Dogs. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire bringing you Canadian Lacrosse League action on CLAX TV2. Thanks for being with us. We'll be taking a quick break and we'll be right back with the second quarter.
Well, welcome back to Cross Friends to Canadian Lacrosse League Action. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire, McCrory and Bergsma again at center floor to start the second quarter. It's 3-1 Southwest, a pretty low scoring quarter, but not short on action. And Bergsma taps it right over to Jake Kranz, who ran past it. He was coming in so hard. And Goddard tries to get that loose ball. Nice job by Spanger to keep him away. And it is the first possession of the quarter for the Cyclops. Braden Curran coming up with it. Spanger picked up high, but now just runs right past Patrick McCrory. Sorry, Ryan, I get the McCrory brothers back <laughs> mixed up all the time. I, some, I think their parents might even, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Seems like everyone does. Patrick is 88. Ryan is 14. Patrick takes the faceoffs. You see Ryan pretty active in the defense. There's a save by Lucas Coot. And there is... Patrick McCrory running the ball up the floor. Gives it up to John St. John. Sees an opening. Goes in. Oh, nice save. I was mentioning he had 92 points in his junior A season last year with the Beaches. And picked by the Rochester Nighthawks. Now he's hustling back to show he's a two-way player and almost gets the ball loose. Brady Hesseltine, nice job under the double team to hold on to it. And we'll give it off to Liam Patton. Quick pass across. Hesseltine wants to shoot. That one goes off the, the post and up into the crowd. It's going to be... Durham ball or Southwest ball once again. Yeah, Hessel time with an absolute bomb from the outside. And you know, the most impressive thing might have been how quickly he was able to get that off. I don't yeah. even think Cootie even saw that one coming. Blair Goss grabs the loose ball. We're gonna have an off ball push <laughs> in the back. And Vradenberg is knocked down, and the turf dogs go forward with Derek Hoffcroft in possession. Patton picks him up. Jeff McNulty's there. McNulty's got some sweet hands. He's going to pass it off here to St. John. Hopcroft lets it rip, but that is blocked. Caught right in the stick of Jordy Jones-Smith. Nice pass ahead, but Liam Patton stopped running. And he's going to be tackled. I don't think you're supposed to do that in lacrosse. But <laughs> apparently John St. John did it subtly enough that he got yes, away so. with one. That was a trip or a hold or something, it, right? It was something. I mean, if you look at the uh, the Southwest bench, they definitely thought it was something as well. Here's Wasson working his way down. Goddard fakes the shot, passes to the cutting Bergen. And I'll tell you, if Derek Hopcroft and Tim Bergen were catching the ball the way they normally do tonight, it might be about four or five to three for Durham because they'd have had some great chances. And they're such good finishers. That pass gets away. And here goes Bergen. Now he's caught the ball, but great hustle by Gage Board to take away the break. And Bergen, I, I was saying he caught the ball properly, but even then he was kind of slowing down mm -hmm. to take that pass and just kind of running with it. Wasson gets a pick from Zabolts. There's no roll there, so he comes near side. Goddard's shot is knocked down by Curran. Oh, the rebound stopped by Grant Crawley. There's a long outlet pass picked up by Curran. He's stopped by Coot. He didn't have a lot of places to shoot, not no. a lot of options because he had the trailer right on him. Here comes McCrory the other way. Oh, there's a wide open man. And that is McCrory from McCrory. Patrick passing it ahead to Ryan who tucks it home. Or is that Cody McMahon coming off the bench? It looked like it was McMahon yeah, actually sorry. coming off the bench, doing a good job sneaking in behind the defense. And he just feeds this pass right in and just right tiptoes on the crease. and. You know, Crawley made two, three big saves earlier there, and unfortunately for him, not being able to get anything on it, but, you know, McMahon doing a fine job to sneak it by him. Now, if you're not familiar with Sealax, the, I mean, this this period is in every kind of lacrosse. Oh, here comes Vradenberg driving down, pass across, can't be caught there by Brandon Armstrong. And Southwest, Spanger will come back the other way, but you do have, as with all lacrosse, the long change here in the second quarter which can lead to a, a more mm -hmm. wide open game but with the changes change rule it can be even more explosive there's a shot by dance and that one goes wide off the backboards to keen he ducks down gets it back oh what a save by the post i think but coot was looking at it here comes mcmahon he's going to try and get another one and i think matt spanger may have actually helped him create some space and McMahon, who had a hat trick last week, gets his second early in this game. Yeah, just takes a real nice bounce off the post, like you said. He was able to, you know, pick it up, track it down. And like you said, I think you might be right. When Spanger gave him a little bit of a push, it did create that separation. And you see it here, just they're so tight, and Spanger gives the push, and that creates the separation. He's on the wrong side, pulls it over, 
finds the back of the cage. Nice little twister by McMahon. And, and the thing is, the push from Spanger didn't affect his balance. He's, he's very athletic and managed to keep his balance, and that's why he still got the chance. Spanger, Spanger gave him a pretty good push. There's a shot from the outside trying to take advantage of the momentum. Doesn't touch any red jerseys, so it'll be Southwest ball going back the other way. Yeah, you talk about that Spanger, such a big body, shoves yeah. McMahon. It was, you know, a lot smaller than him, but you know, McMahon very solid, a good low center of gravity on the guy. Yeah, he's steady on his pegs, that's for sure. Nice fake, and then the pass across, and Jones Smith wasn't quite ready for it. When you're on the crease, be ready at all times, Jordy. There's the pass up top, and a fresh 30 as Gage Board takes it. Jones Smith will take the ball now. Oh, nice fake by Pike. The toe drag gets himself open, but Coots there to make the stop. We've seen some fine goaltending in this game, and that shot by Pike, he was just kind of drifting into the net, into the crease backwards. Yeah, you talk about that uh, toe drag move by Pike. He actually had a beautiful goal last year, one of the plays of the week, or sorry, last week. One of the, just almost the exact same thing, but he finished short side on the goal last week against the Demons. That pass doesn't connect, and then Hesseltine knocks down the man going for the ball, and that's going to be Durham possession and a fresh 30. Bergen's out there at the top, moves it across. Goddard looks for the roll, man. There's a shot by McNulty. Spent some time in the NLL. Durham really likes what he brings to the game. He's going to go back and play defense as Dance. Little traipse over to the far side of the floor. That pass is high, but it's tracked down. And just running to the middle and taking a shot is <laughs> Bryden Curran. He kept looking like he was going to pass, and then everything opened for him. Lots of time for Coot to get it across mid-floor, but there's the man coming open. Pass across to St. John. He steps into open space. Shoots, scores. John St. John used Cody McMahon as a decoy. Couple of fakes and just rips it home. Oh, yeah, that's just great patience by St. John there. Just waiting, gives a little fake, and then just kind of well, dances right in there. And, you know, like you said, the 92 points in a junior A season, that's no fluke. The guy has some serious skill. And you can see here, he walks in and just goes short side. He barely had any yeah. space to put that in. No angle. And just finds a hole. We're going to see it. No, we're not going to see it again. But um, the Southwest Cyclops have taken a timeout with 9.26 to go here in the second quarter. They fall behind 4-3. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire. And Patty does... Does it surprise you that they're taking a timeout with, you know, just a couple of minutes until there'd be the, the official's timeout? Yeah, you know, maybe it's, a, you know, normally you would just be, you know, kind of, you would wait, they wait it out, but maybe because it's kind of just, you know, potted on in the last little while, maybe not so much in the score, but it just seemed like the last, you know, three, four minutes, yeah. it kind of really started going in the favor of the turf dog. So maybe it's just, you know, to kind of calm down the troops, relax, don't worry about it. We're going to take a look at Lucas Coot and how well he is playing lately. Here's the shot from the outside. Makes the first save. It's the second one that's a beauty. Stopping Jordan Dance in tight. Yeah, the, and you know, a big part of Cootie's games too today is the fact that he has two assists. He's really been passing the yeah. ball well. As, you know, he's had a little, little few errant passes here and there, but he's definitely not afraid to make it rain out here. Well, Graham Bergsma was not ready for the faceoff. So McCrory takes it, but then loses it. And great hustle by Brady Hesseltine to jump in and get the ball. Kind of a moving pick given by the Cyclops, and there's a long pass, but way high for Goddard. Nicely scooped by Hopcroft. He's on his offside. Didn't have any angle, so he holds on to it. Nice Smart job play. picking up Goddard in front so that he couldn't get a chance. Cross-handed pass by Zaboltz. St. John rolls off that, looks for the pick, gets it to Hopcroft. Oh, can't quite connect with Zaboltz. And we talked before the game about how there's some talented additions to this Durham Turf Dog lineup, but they're not used to each other yet. And you can see maybe that that little like early season look to some of these guys, even this point in the season. Yeah, absolutely. Jones Smith wide open, shoots, doesn't score. <laughs> he started to put his hands up, dropped them. And a penalty coming to Jones Smith for checking in the crease. You can go after the loose ball in the crease, but once the goalie has it in his stick, you can't check him. 
And that ball's just flipped over the head by Hopcroft. It'll be picked up, and the Cyclops, it's going to be a slashing call, actually, on Jones Smith. We'll see what happens on this call. Here we go, Smith. Jones Smith is going to take the shot. The ball rolls out. It almost went in. You can see Jones Smith and he starts to throw his hands up <laughs> and puts them back down. Smart to get out of the crease and go after it, but just throw them all the way up if you think you might have scored. You <laughs> might just convince a goalie once or twice in your career, and uh, those goals are worth it. Hopcroft gives it down low to Wasson. They hit the man right in the crease. Oh. Man off the post. Oh, Goddard gets it. Or is that Cody McMahon again? I'm trying to deny Cody McMahon of his goals, but he's got three of them now. And there's the big smile. Cody McMahon, who's one of the happiest looking players on the floor when he <laughs> scores a goal. Absolutely, and he's been doing it a lot lately. You see it here. Just a beautiful find on the crease, but a massive save by Crawley, but just, it is, it was Goddard there picking yeah, up the garbage. Was and we, we talked about it, you know, when he gets into space with a goalie in the net, he's not going to miss. And a yawning cage like that, there's no way he's not going to put that one away. But Crawley got a bit of it, even <laughs> on that one. Like, yeah. Grant Crawley is really moving well, the veteran player. That ball bounces out, it goes off a turf dog. The Cyclops get it back, and that is now four straight goals for the turf dogs as they go up five to one after trailing it. That is one thing they've been doing. The last few years, they've played very well, but they've had stretches where they give up a bunch of goals. And this year, they've created their own runs going the other way. A penalty coming. Grant Speeds, the referee, has thrown his hand up, and we're gonna see who's going. And I think they're gonna make a tripping call as everyone was kind of banging around inside. It is Ryan McCrory, McCrory going to the yeah. box. Mark Farthing there to talk to the official and see what the call is. It's okay. roughing. I think they're going to get on this hit there. Looks like yeah. McCrory might have got yeah. a little bit of an elbow up almost, but they called it for roughing, so this Turf Dogs team is going to have to go to the penalty kill. So when it's a loose ball, you can hit the guy within six feet mm -hmm. of the ball. As long as it's from the front, it's a clean hit. But I'm going to say... Not acceptable. Coot, though, with the save, traps it between the hand and the legs. Farthing takes a look up floor. Nice little head fake to get Dance moving, then runs up over mid floor. You have 10 seconds to get over center, and then just five more to get inside the restraining line. He does it. Oh, takes a bump from behind, loses the ball. He's going to get it back. What an effort play by Mark Farthing. That's just the type of player Mark Farthing is. Oh, what a goal! Josh <laughs> Wasson. We haven't seen him do a lot of that lately, but he's going to point up to some friends up in the stands. <laughs> some of the Turf Dogs non-dressed players, and that's a beauty. You know, Josh Washington used to be one of the best players in MSL at moving along the crease, and this is the kind of thing that he did for years. Yeah, this is vintage Wasson here, just doing a great job. He almost loses his feet, footing there, and then just to have the composure to, you know, with that beautiful crease dive, but you got to tip your cap to Mark oh. Farthing earlier yes. because that play yeah. doesn't happen if he does not run the ball all the way up. He loses the ball, pick it back up, and gets it there. Yeah, our third short-handed goal of the game, this one by Wasson. If you have a chance, go to the Sealax site and look up Sealax Radio. Sealax Beat is my radio show, and I uh, ma had Matthew Carrick, who's actually our switcher, our director tonight, and uh, we had some lot of fun talking about the history of this league, and including talking about the shorthanded hat trick that Damon <laughs> Edwards had in one of his seven games in the league before he was signed by the Toronto Rock. He played for these Durham Turf Dogs, and he was just a blazer. Oh, yeah. Maybe the fastest guy we've seen in the league. Absolutely, and he's one of the fastest guys in the NLL, and you oh. ask the Toronto Rock, they are definitely desperately missing uh, Damon uh, Edwards on the back end right now. April, he expects to come back, he was telling me. That's Dan Keen up top. He's backing away, looking for something open. He's going to go to Hestine and he'll get it back. I'm sure, that was Corbett down there. There's the shot by Dance turned aside, and Lucas Coot is seeing that ball. Dan Keen has it back up top with a fresh 30. Corbett up to Keen. He's going to skip pass over to Gage Board, who gives it to Dance. Goes right back up top. Keen with the high shot and might not look dangerous, but he scores a bunch from up there. That's a nice save by Coot with the shrug especially because Keen usually goes low mm -hmm. and Coot 
was caught dropping a bit, but got the shoulders up. Gage Board with another loose ball. The guy's been an absolute monster on the offensive boards tonight. Penalty's over. over. We're back to five on five. Nevin Sullivan and Dance fighting for possession. Dance gets great position, tries to work with the foot, but Sullivan shoves him aside. Now Goddard is checking Gage Board, who comes out with it. Shoot, saved by Coot. And Patrick Corbett was slipping in the back door and may have been open for a good look on that mm -hmm. one. Here come the Turf Dogs. Sullivan to Freidenberg. What a hit by Hesseltine as Freidenberg thought he had an open look. It bounces off the backboards, and then Vradenberg goes and gets it back. Hesseltine right on him again, but Vradenberg comes out with it, goes to the net, flings it back out. He's not going to try again. No. They've got five to shoot. Expect Washington to just rip it, and great job to fire it low off the pads and get a reset. That's a veteran play. You see the clock ticking down. Just get it on net, and you know it gets out of play, and they're going to get possession after this uh, break. We'll take a quick referee's break. We'll be back with more the rest of the second half, the second quarter of Sealax Across on JBI Network. Well, welcome back to the Cross Friends to the GM Center in Oshawa. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire. It is six to three for the Turf Dogs. They have the ball. We're back to five on five lacrosse. This is the game to be at if you're hungry. They've given away wings. They've given away a burrito. <laughs> My stomach's starting to growl just uh, yeah. watching this. There's a pass across to Wasson. He's going to go to the net again. Nicely picked up by Connor Daly. Great footwork by Daly, but he's going to pass it over to Goddard. Goddard gets away from Kranz. Goes by Goss, but Crawley is there for the save. There's the long, uh, the outlet pass, and Josh Watson's just picking up the guy off the bench, and Farthing has to hustle over to take Spanger. Does a nice job of it. Lays the lumber on. Spanger will just trot around. They've got 18 on the shot clock as they set up the O. Just getting the fifth guy out now, and Ward sees an opening. Hopcroft on him. Maybe forced that shot to go wide. Seven on the shot clock, and Patton's going to whip one that goes off the arm of Lucas Coot, and now Gage Board with another loose ball. He's got to have seven or eight <laughs> yeah, so I know. far in this first half. Three and a half minutes to go in the half. Nice fake in the shot, but Coot is there to stop Reed Board on that one. Lucas Coot, who was a fairly long time Whippy Warriors player, mm -hmm. and uh, had a pretty solid junior career where, where he was never really the key starter for them until his last season. Splitting time with Alexis Bouquet did win a championship or two. That ball bounces out and Gage Board again with the loose ball. He's knocked down though and it's stripped. Bergen picks it up. Turf Dogs trying to put some pressure on across to McCrory. McCrory with a couple big hits in this game. Goddard stripped by Gage Board as he goes to the net. Man, Gage Board is having himself a game. I, 
every time I see him play, I'm so impressed with just the, the level of effort and the, the small things he does at both ends of the floor. This one comes across to Hesseltine. Again, the Cyclops just getting their last offensive guy out with about 14 seconds on the shot clock. Jones Smith kind of took a shot to the chops, but it's scored by Jordan Dance. Jones Smith will pay that price to open up some floor room, and Jordan Dance bounces one in. Dance there with the, the hat trick, and he was almost up in our press box here. That's how far he was on our other yeah. side, but that does not matter as he's got an absolute cannon, and it's a skipper here. You see that, like you mentioned, the nice pick comes around beautiful skipper coot has been playing fantastic today but uh a absolute great shot that you know he really didn't have a chance on yeah dan's running to his offside and bounces it inside of the post dan keen opening up some space with a little pick there there's a shot by sullivan ball picked up by kern along the boards Six to four as we approach the final two minutes of the half. Not the highest scoring game still, but boy, it's been exciting. Keen rips it, knocked down by Zabolts, making it, doing his best Thomas Hogarth impression. And here comes Derek Hopcroft. This is trouble for the Cyclops, but the oh. save by Crawley gets them out of it, and they're going to go back the other way. Nevin Sullivan just stood back to try and take away the pass, and it picks off the pass from Jordan Dance straight into the stick we're going to have an extended halftime of 18 minutes so uh, you can stay here the uoit university of ontario institute of technology dance team will be performing or you can go over to Sealax tv one and uh and check out niagara this week and we'll try and get the score for you in that one if we can share it with you that pass is picked off by st john or is caught by st john and there's a shot just before the buzzer goes, but the Cyclops get the ball anyway. Josh Wasson will pick up Board coming off the bench. That's Reed Board. Final minute of play, 6-4 Durham. From Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire. Thanks for being with us for what's been an exciting first half of Canadian Lacrosse League action. Reed Board with a little toe drag. Another fake comes down, now passes it up top. And there's Pike with the same move he made earlier. It works to perfection, but he can't bury it. That's twice now we've seen him with yeah. that move. And you think, you know, as a defender, you know it's coming, but sometimes <laughs> you just bite on it <laughs> and you can't do anything about it. Goddard is offside. How did that oh. ball go in? Oh. We've seen Goddard shoot from this side just on the run like that and pick a spot, but that is just an astonishing shot. Yeah. You know, Dylan Goddard, that's the type of player he is. Doesn't matter where he is <laughs> on the floor. He is not afraid to shoot from there, and you know he just proved why he does it, because he can pretty much score from anywhere. Just a terrible angle, and you can see here on the replay that he's just on the, his, he's almost at goal line extended, and he just puts it in with ease, and we talked about it earlier. We said that he doesn't shoot hard, but boy, is he accurate. I actually, watching the replay, still don't know where that ball went in. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think it was over the shoulder of Crawley, who's jumping out of his crease to get this ball off the faceoff. Maybe it was hip high, but somehow Goddard found that spot, and that pass is picked off. Here comes the bolts. He's going to have a chance to shoot on his offside. Crawley stops that one. Oh, now wide open on the top. Oh, and Crawley again stones McCrory. The bolts is going to try and get the loose ball. Gets it. We're into the final seven seconds, and Durham will take a timeout. 5.2 officially on the clock up above. I'm sure they'll see if they can get a couple seconds put back on. Lucas Coot will come to the bench for an extra attacker, having given up just four goals. And boy, Crawley's been good. Coot's been very good. Yeah, both these goalies, both these goalies just you know out dueling each other. I mean, we're going to see a few here. Here's, and yeah, here's Lucas Coot, and he's going to stop. There's that toe drag again on Pike. And that's a big save on the second one. Just robbing Jordy Jones-Smith. Boy, Coot's been sharp. Yeah, absolutely he has. There's, you know, and that's the, and that's, and that's the thing too with, with Coot. It's not even just the first save. It's been the second yeah. save. And he's yeah. so athletic being able, you know, to get back 
into position, and uh, we mentioned it earlier as well. He also has two assists and made some good plays from his crease, scooping up the ball, getting up the floor, and that's you know been a big part to why this Durham Turf Dogs transition game has been so strong. <laughs> I'm laughing because Grant Spees, the referee, came out of the talking to the officials in the box, put seven fingers up in the air to say you're going to have seven seconds, and Cole Murray, the backup goaltender, put ten fingers up, <laughs> which is very ambitious because. There was definitely not more than seven and a half seconds when the whistle <laughs> no. blew. No. Bergen has it over to McMahon. Goddard, he's going to have to shoot. No, he's going to go down low, and McNulty gets one off. A great chance. And boy, they almost got another one on the rebound, but it is seven to four as we go to the halftime. Again, you can stay with us and see the UOIT dancers, or you can watch the other game on the other channel. And uh, the score over there, what's the score? Seven to three. For Niagara over the Oswegian Demons, so you can go check that one out. And uh, Pat Gregoire, a pretty solid comeback for the Turf Dogs, who control play early, then really were going to kind of run out of their own rank, and just they've got that composure this year to come back and get themselves back in a game. Yeah, absolutely. And it's you know we talked about it a little bit earlier. You know this is a different dynamic offense. This is definitely you know you know we we do see some new pieces, but a, a big part to you know you know cutting that that big deficit was you know the play of Wasson and uh, Hopcroft two veteran guys you know Hopcroft not not a guy that's played on this on this team uh, you know a lot this year only getting into one game but he's showing how valuable he is not even just scoring at that big mm -hmm. goal but slowing down the offense really you know working the ball around as well and you know, they, you talked about it earlier, saying that this is a team that kind of goes through those spurs where they can't really find anything. But tonight, they've done a pretty good job making sure that spurt is not too big. Yeah, we are going to take a break in about 17 minutes. There'll be a lot of dance going on here. <laughs> We're going to enjoy it. We're going to take a bit of a break. We'll be back. Pat Gregoire and I am Stephen Stamp bringing you Canadian Lacrosse League action on CLAX TV 2 for the Canadian Lacrosse League on JBI Sports Network. Thanks for being with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come back in about 16 minutes. We'll see you then.
Hello, the Cross Friends. Welcome back to the GM Center here in Oshawa. I'm Stephen Stamp with Patty Gregoire. It is seven to four for the Durham Turf Dogs. Uh, I was going to say we're thinking about you know who are the early candidates for three stars. Uh, Grant Crawley won. Jordan Nance with three goals and assists. At the other end, Lucas Coote. Lucas Coote has been excellent in net, and he's leading them in scoring. He's got five assists. It's unbelievable. We talked about how you see Joel Lawson's goal here. A beautiful crease oh. dive, and we talk about how good these goalies have been, but there's been no shortage yeah. of highlight real goals, and that being one of them. Yeah, Josh Lawson with one of the three shorthanded goals in the first half, and uh, well, how about Lucas Kuta? <laughs> All the saves, five assists. What a half. That's unbelievable. It's That's unbelievable. a season for most goalies. <laughs> yeah. The Cyclops come up with the ball off the opening faceoff here in the second half. Graham Bergsman gets it, passes it to Jake Kranz, who's standing in the change box and uh, executes a tricky little maneuver to get the Cyclops going on offense. They've got 15 to shoot after getting that first possession. Nothing going on for the Cyclops so far. Now they've got Ward is going to cut down, creates a lane for himself for the save by Coot again. And a big hit. Looks like McCrory is down. He's separated from his stick. There's Goddard. That one's stopped by Crawley. He doesn't see where it is, and it's picked up sharply. In the other game, we're three quarters of the way through, and it's 11-5 for Niagara. That shot is up high by Corbett. Bounces all the way back over center, but it won't be over and back because it's going straight to the Turf Dogs. They're going to slow things down a little bit. Bergen, though, will shoot and score. Tim Bergen on his offside. Just saw something he liked, and Grant Crawley would like to have that one back. More from a positioning than a stopping point of view. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, maybe even Bergen just taking that shot. He really wasn't anticipating mm. him to take it. But we talked about Bergen being, you know, an X factor for this team and kind of trying to get into it here. And, you know, just a great look. But, like you said, it looks like Crawley wasn't even really expecting it. But... Uh, you know, once this once Bergen gets going, this could be a huge, huge addition for this already deadly Turf Dogs offense. Yeah, and I mean, we've talked about Jesse Guerin and Thomas Hogarth, their two top scorers, both missing, but they're just picking it up with no problems, and, and oddly enough, without a ton of contribution from Dylan Goddard. They move it around the outside. McMahon cuts to the middle, can't get it. He's got two goals and an assist tonight. Couldn't catch that pass, though. Vradenberg fighting for the ball. Eventually, Sullivan almost had it, but it's going to be Spanger. There's only two seconds left to shoot, so Sullivan checked by Spanger, Spanger from behind. Just the stick on stick. Nice check there. Long breakout pass to Patton. He can't get it. McMahon just ties him up. I'm not sure if Brendan Armstrong meant to do that, but it worked out pretty well. <laughs> yeah. The little drop to the floor, jump up with the ball. I'm sure he'll take it. Oh, yeah, and Daryl Gibson, the defensive coach, gives him a pat on the head. As the Turf Dogs go up, 15 to shoot. Bergen can't take that pass, and Patton's going to pick it up off the floor. Nice job by McNulty to get back, and the pass to Kranz doesn't connect. He goes up over St. John to get it, though. He's checked hard by McNulty, and he gets the loose ball. Boy, Jeff McNulty's having a strong game, and certainly more in the defensive end. St. John's st shot stopped. Liam Patton got that with the stick, and here comes Spanger. We'll see what McCrory can do. Two on one, pass across to Board. Oh, what a beauty <laughs> by Reed Board. I tell you, Gage Board has done a lot more all over the floor, but Reed shows some nice touch at the finish. Yeah, absolutely. Some real slick hands. And we talked about Matt Spanger. You know, he's also been all over, getting a nice assist here, recognizing mm. he's on his wrong side, waiting, waiting, and gives it a Reed Board a great dip and dunk there, keeping his feet in outside of the crease and you know a big goal for the southwest team because uh, you know they were down four goals now three you know they're just have to kind of chip away here and to get back tied in this game you know just almost halfway through the third yeah and lucas coot was right on that shot it was just perfectly placed by reed board ball comes out can't quite be picked up by ward so durham gets the ball i think graham Bergsma's pretty much won every single draw. It's whether, you know, Southwest yeah. picks up the loose ball, yeah. but it seems like he's getting into at least a scrum every time. 
Sullivan takes the pass on the near side, goes across, hard pass, shot by Wasson, bounces up high, doesn't catch anything. So they've got eight to shoot as Farthing has it. He'll fire it down, a little spin and a shot. What a play there by Vradenberg, but can't finish. Sprinting up the floor. Cyclops looking for a break, but nice job by Durham to get back on D. Dance, spin move. Runs into three green jerseys, passes over to Jones Smith, who was starting to cut down before he had the ball in his stick. He'll go up high to Hesseltine. Hesseltine rips one down low on the far side. Well, more of a, just trying to place that ball in there. There's another shot, another save, but it's picked up. Jones Smith with, with the quick shot, it's behind. Lucas Coote, but jumped on immediately. Brendan Monroe running up the floor. Almost goes over and back, but just gets rid of it to Josh Watson on time. Behind the back, what a save by Crawley on Bergen, another save. McNulty was right there, and Crawley looking very sharp, trying to keep the Cyclops in it. If they don't win tonight with Niagara leading solidly over us weekend in the other game, it could spell the end of the Cyclops playoff chances. These Keen two, with the ball. These two goalies just out dueling them every time. Just you I do I can do it better than you can do it every time it seems like. Keen trying to get by John St. John. St. John got a bit of a check on him and the shot goes wide. Zabolt. Watched by Patton. The ball's knocked loose and Patton's gonna get it. Actually it's scooped up there. And Corbett comes in all alone, misses the net. Coot will try and jump on it, but Patton picks it up. I thought he actually went through the crease to get that. Yeah, looks, looks like he did, but... And now they're going to call a loose ball push on Hopcroft, and Patton will get the ball for it. I thought he definitely stepped on the line there. Uh, I thought so, too. Corbett also, I think he beat uh, Coot there, but, you know, he just yeah. missed the net just wide on the left-hand side there. Now he's going to try and make a pass. Corbett will throw it up high to Reed Board. Board, the latest goal scorer. There's Keen with the shot outside. Oh! Hard off the crossbar, off the back of Coot, and somehow didn't go in. That one there had eyes just barely hitting the pipe there. I thought it tickled Twine there. McCrory will throw it up top. Wasson will throw, slow things down a little bit. McMahon throws to the far side, but it bounces loose. Six to shoot. Josh Wasson's going to go deep. No problem for Crawley. He dropped into the butterfly and snagged that one. The pass almost got away, but Pike picked it up. He's trapped just inside center, but he gets the ball up to Cody Ward. Nice play under pressure. Spanger, pass it off. He's going to stay up and play some O. Cuts to the net at the exact same time as Bergsma. And Ward tries to get the shot. It goes off a Durham player. It'll be Southwest ball, and they'll make a few changes. Actually, just one change as Bergsman goes off. Spanger and Ward stay out there. Ward lost it under a check from McMahon. Gets it back, though. 20 on the shot clock. Hesseltine didn't look shot, and he actually may have had one there. He flips it back out to Ward, who spins. Gets a shot off with Wasson on him. Some intense pressure by the, the Cyclops with the Turf Dogs get through it. And Derek Hopcroft is going to let it fly, bounces it. Crawley extends to get that ball. Now he's looking up the floor. It's not there. He'll give it off to Spanger. Nice pick there by Bergen. And we talked about Hopcroft so much in this game. You know, if they can really get that pick game on the two-man side there, if you give Hopcroft any space, most of the time yeah. he's going to score from that spot, you know. Uh, just unfortunately, there's two hot goalies in this game right now doing a great job keeping this a low scoring game. There's a shot by Jones Smith off the foot of Coot. Bounced away. Are they going to call that over and back? As it, there was a shot, it was knocked by Bryden Curran, but no possession. So they're going to give possession once again to Blair Goss and the Cyclops. Jones Smith just not ready for that pass. That was a lovely look from Blair Goss. Jordan Smith passes it down low. Keen has it. Goss shoots, saved by Coot. Let us know who you think should be the three stars of this game. Maybe include Lucas Coot so <laughs> I far. I think he might get a couple votes. Yeah. At JVI Video and at Sealax League. 
Let us know who you think it should be. We'll uh, take them into consideration when we're making our decisions. Later in the game, Goddard running down under Kranz. Next option play, we'll have the officials time out. We'll take a quick break. Make sure you come back with us. This is exciting. There's a quick shot. Oh, what a save on Zabolt by Crawley just before the shot clock. They get another chance. There's a shot and another save. Boy, maybe put Grant Crawley in there too. I mean, I thought so anyway, but those are another pair of beauties. Like I said, every time one goalie makes a huge stop and the other, other one down the end says, look, whatever you can do, I can do it better. Gage Board takes the ball. <laughs> Liam Patton loses his stick to a little cross check from Farthing, who takes a swing at him as Patton <laughs> chops him. Nice play by Bort to hustle back and stop that one before it went over center. Has to take the shot as the shot clock about to expire. Patton wins a battle with Goddard. And he's blown up by Mark Farthing. But the Cyclops still come out with the ball, and Patton and Vradenberg are all tied up. They get free. And Bort was just looking for someone to pass to, eventually gives it up to Pike. They come around to Patton, who bounces one well wide. Comes out to Pike High. They've got 13 to shoot. Gets away from Patton into the bench. Tommy Beckett shows with his hands why. He is an equipment man and not a player. <laughs> and we will take a quick break. I am Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire bringing you Canadian Lacrosse League action. We'll be back with the rest of the third quarter. Welcome back, lacrosse friends. Tim Bergen trying to go a little bit early, so they blow it down, and he'll have to start again. 5.53 to go here in the third quarter. It's 8-5 to five for Durham. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire. This is an exciting game, a little low scoring, but that's because of sensational play by both goalies. McCrory moves it back across. His brother passes it over to Hopcroft. Tight defense there by Connor Daly. There's the big pick by Bergen, and Hopcroft goes to the net, stepped on the line. Great call to pick up that toe. Hopcroft just landed on the crease line. Here come the Cyclops the other way. There's a shot going a little bit wide by Hesseltine. It's up in the air. What a nice job by Cody McMahon to gauge by Hesseltine the way he was looking when the ball was coming and just knock his stick away. That shot almost gets by Coot. Cyclops try and pick the ball up in the crease, but the Turf Dogs will come up with it. Such a smart play by McMahon. Now McCrory running the ball up the floor. Ryan McCrory, that is. He gets the ball down low and somehow hangs on to it under the intense pressure. St. John cutting to the net. McCrory comes open, runs himself into a check, but gives it to Sullivan. He's immediately picked up. Nice defensive work by the Cyclops. And now St. John comes open, shoots, saved by Crawley. It's loose in the crease, Crawley grabs it and flings it out. Yeah, the Southwest defense really upping the, the pressure here, realizing you know they're gonna, you know, have to start playing with some urgency here. But uh, you know, that's the thing with a guy like John St. John, you pressure too much. He's so so shifty, so slippery, he's able to get away, and you're gonna really need that backside help on the defense there. Keen sliding down low. Oh, a nice shot under pressure, but that one bounces just wide. Graham Bergsman, it looked like he wanted to reset. I thought it was pretty close, but probably just mm -hmm. slid a little bit wide of Coot. 
Lawson with the lob pass over to Goddard. They go down low on St. John looking for somebody. Sorry, there's McMahon. No, it is St. John. I thought with the, the way he was moving, the kind of the shoulder movement, it looks <laughs> like John St. John. That pass gets away, but they'll track it down. They've only got four to shoot, though, and McNulty is just going to flip it over into the far corner let the Turf Dogs get back on D. Three and a half to go here in the third. Still 8-5 for Durham. Things not so close down in St. Catharines. It's 15 to six for the Niagara Lock Monsters leading the Oswegan Demons. So that's in the ILA in, uh, in Oswegan. So a road win coming for the Niagara Lock Monsters it looks like unless the huge comeback comes. There's a shot and another save on Gage Board by Lucas Coote. McNulty comes up with the ball and makes a nice quick little pass out. Farthing, outlet pass. Here comes Radenberg, tries to run past Goss. Gonna go in behind the net. St. John's open, steps out, pass across, knocked down. He had the cutter, but couldn't get it through the sea of sticks. St. John's gonna throw it across now, and Hopcroft takes this pass, eight to shoot. Farthing's back behind center, thinking the ball was about to be turned over. He steps in. Hopcroft is just gonna turn and shoot. I thought he was gonna go to Hop to Farthing for the long outside shot. I thought so too, <laughs> but you know, Farthing, heads up play, recognizing that, you know, there could have been a, a turnover there. And Farthing, you know, he's such a smart, smart player. Yeah. You know, so fast, just so so tenacious. And, you know, he's just been such a big heart and soul guy of this team, not just tonight, mm -hmm. the entire season. Yeah. McCrory takes the pass and gives it back over to the far side. Wasson kind of strong arms one to St. John. Crawley got that one no problem. St. John picks it up behind the back pass. Oh, just missing. That was Bergen. Oh. Comes straight back to him, though. What a pass by St. John. Bergen just couldn't bury it. I don't think Crawley even got there. No. Reset. It's 20 up. seconds to go for the Turf Dogs. Cyclops defense. You can just tell by looking at them <laughs> gasping for air. Really not pressing out like they normally do on defense here. Bergen trying to swim through. Corbett hooks him down. Shot from the outside. Oh, from his knees. That was Bergen, and they're gonna say he landed in the crease with his hands while the Cyclops are trying to play it. So Southwest will get possession. Just over a minute and a half to go here in the third quarter. Eight to five for the Turf Dogs. I'm Steven Stamp with Pat Gregoire. As the ball is bounced up to Jake Kranz. Hesseltine's waiting for Spanger to come out and join them on O. Spanger will set a pick. A little roll, but Hesseltine holds on to it. Backdoor cutter, gets it to him. Dance with a hard shot. Coot tries to grab it, he swats it away. Now he's gonna get possession. Hard work by Jake Kranz. Spanger playing a lot more offense here, whether it's in transition, and as I mentioned his name with a yeah, great he strip. he strips it there, and Kranz comes up with it on his offside. He's looking for the trailer. Has to, he runs into Spies, oh. who gets shoved into the boards. <laughs> and then bumps him again <laughs> as he gets up. Jake Kranz and Grant Spies, I'm not sure who got the worst of that. There's the cutting, McCrory misses the shot wide, it's gonna bounce up into the seats. Vradenberg tried to reach out behind him, didn't quite grab it, but it is Southwest ball. They've got one cutter who's picked up nicely by Farthing, you talked about how alert he is. Great job of picking up the cutting Connor Daly. Keen, who's been really kept quiet tonight, I don't think he's got more than a point. Hesseltine's shot stopped by Coot. Yeah, nothing actually for Dan Keene. That is shocking. Penalty coming. No, it's a sneaky six on five for the uh, Cyclops. It's the long six on five too, so <laughs> quite a sprint by Grant Crawley. Three seconds left. I guess it's not really sneaky this late in the quarter. No. Looked like Koo was looking to get that so he could try to, you know, do his best Nick Rose impression yeah. for the crease. And the way he's been passing the ball, I wouldn't put past him at all. He'd, he'd probably nail it on one hop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lucas Koot handling the ball very well. And the Turf Dogs with an 8-5 to five lead after three quarters of play. Excellent game so far. Turf, the, both goalies have been great, but we've had lots of action. I'm Stephen Stamp for Pat Gregoire and the JBI Sports Network crew bringing you this Canadian Lacrosse League action. We'll take a break, come back for the fourth quarter in a minute and a half.
Welcome back to Cross Friends. It's 8 5. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire, the Turf Dogs lead. And with Niagara beating the Oswegian Demons in the other game, or close to it. They're up 15 to 6 last we checked. So I think it's a fairly safe lead. The Southwest Cyclops fighting for their playoff lives, and Bergsma wins it, gets it himself. Nice pass ahead. Spanger is going to shoot scores. Spanger thought about passing over to Curran, wisely pulled it back and just tucked it past Lucas Coot. That's a beauty by the captain. Yeah, huge, huge, huge goal. He talked about Matt Spanger being a guy that's all over the floor and, you know, finally getting that goal. He's done so well away from the ball, setting picks, but let's tip our cap to Graham's Berg Bergsma as well. I mean, the guy's been an absolute horse on yeah. the faceoffs, and he's been a real X factor for this Southwest team. Pulls that one back with his foot, and it's picked up by Kranz, who's running down the floor past Sullivan, farthing there to turn him aside. He'll hit Dance on the coming off the bench. There's Farthing with another big defensive play. Boy, Mark Farthing's having a heck of a game. Curran runs across. It's over at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. 16-6 was the final, so there's a save by the face of Lucas Coote. That pass gets away, and Southwest will get possession again. So Southwest, they've got to win here. And, and what better two. way to start that uh, first, or sorry, fourth quarter yeah. with a huge goal from your captain as well. Here's Hesseltine shooting. Coot went down a little early, stopped another one with his face, though, as he <laughs> fell. Sometimes you got to be lucky to be good. He's been good all night, may have been lucky there. Hard pass out, and Hopcroft grabs it. Ten-second count, though. They don't make it over mid-floor, and Southwest, with the press, will get the ball back. Great work by Dan Keene. Hasn't scored, but... Boy, he's helping out in other ways. And that's what good players do. You know, when the points aren't coming, you you have to find other ways to be effective, and he has done that tonight. Pike is looking for Keenan. Instead, he's going to the net. He's deed up. Gets the shot off, comes off the boards, back out to Keen. Seven to shoot. They try to get it to Keen. Instead, the shot by Ward, that goes wide. It's knocked down, three on the shot clock. The outside shot by Pike misses. It's going to be Durham possession. It'll roll all the way down to the far restraining line. And John St. John was hoping he might get a quick reset and go, but it actually didn't pick up right away. Now he's behind the back, goes off of a Cyclops. And that may not be a shot the coaches want him taking. Wasson grabs the ball, Absolutely passes it over not. to Hopcroft. Early in the shot clock, and really not much of a lane to fire. No. There's a oh. hard one from Bergen. That'll be a reset as it goes off. Grant Crawley, they asked him if he's okay. He's like, I'm a goalie, I'm fine. <laughs> and Par off. for the course. <laughs> yeah. He's like, Coot took two off the face. Go ask him <laughs> if he's okay. There's a pass through to McMahon, just knocked away by Pike. Crawley's going to get it as it went through the crease. Cody, Cody McMahon did that. Is 8-6, still the score. Here come the Cyclops again, putting some pressure on both in terms of physical pressure, pressing the turf dogs, and also some mental pressure, as they get another one. That's a bounce shot. I believe that's Reed Board ripping that one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. A nice outside shot from Reed Board, getting two pretty nice goals so far. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this being the most timely as it brings the Southwest Cyclops in from now. Down one goal and lots of time left on this clock. See this there. Nice spin move and just rips and grips it. And a nice pick there on as well. Look up the scoreboard now. They're only down one and you say that game is over at the ILA. So now they are absolutely 100% playing for their postseason lives. Pass across to the cutter. Gets by the bolts but goes right into McCrory. He's going to pass it over to the other McCrory. That was Patrick to Rory. Ryan? <laughs> Rory McCrory. That would be quite that a That would name. be a great handle. <laughs> <laughs> would be. That ball's going to bounce off the back. Is it over and back? It is. And <laughs> <laughs> McCrory kind of flicks it at Graham Bergsma. Bergsma was looking for the uh, delay game penalty there. Ah, he may have had a point. There's a save by Coot, who's they're shooting everything low. He is going down. I think they're actually trying to bounce them up over mm -hmm. his shoulders as he drops down. Here's Farthing breaking down. Twister pass attempt gets away from him. Bright idea, though. 
Yeah, maybe a little overzealous on the, the twisting. Now Farthing's going to go to be an outlet. Pass by McNulty, head to Hopcroft. Just 15 on the shot clock. And the Turf Dogs just getting their last offensive guy out now. Hopcroft with five to shoot, rips one wide. It's going to go out to Sullivan. He'll just flick it into the corner. And it's still a one goal game. The Turf Dogs leading, but this is where they need to really buckle down and, and get the momentum swung back around. Keen over to Dance. Dance with the hat trick. Leading the turf of the Cyclops. Pike shoots. That one goes wide. And Hopcroft is looking a little ginger as he goes forward. And there's the pass. Oh, and Vradenberg can't pick it up or he was all alone on Grant Crawley. Now he's one on two. Still tries to get to the net, but nice job by Keen to just get a stick on stick. Bergen, hard pass across. McNulty's going to let it fly. Saved by Crawley, but it comes straight back out to Bergen, a fresh 30. Bergen tries to swim move on Goss. He doesn't go for it, just takes the body. There's a textbook example of how to play against the swim move. Looks like Bergen's now really starting to get into the groove of things. You did say it looked like he was just trying mm. to, you know, catch his groove, and that's. it looks like he's very comfortable now. Oh, St. John misses the net. He had a lane there. Wasson battling hard for the loose ball. Can't get it. It's picked up by Hesseltine. Two on one. He's on his offside. He's going to go to Corbett. No, he's going to shoot. And Coot somehow got part of that. There's Wasson. He is working his butt off on this shift, but it's going to come back out. There's the hard shot by Corbett. Off the backboards. Tipped and controlled by Zabolts. That's a great play to control the ball under pressure. Get it over to John St. John, who's trying to break by the defender. Puts the that is a face dodge if I've ever seen him <laughs> on the stick right up to his mask. Cutting the bolts takes it. Moving pick called. No goals. It was shot after the whistle, clearly after. Nice shift there for the bolts. We talk about mm. these new players kind of trying to find their groove, and it looked like you know he's not able to kind of get offensively uh, in, in uh, into the swing of things, but he's doing the he's doing the little things right now that's really well. It is 9.15 to go here in the fourth quarter. The score, eight to seven, a one goal game. The Durham Turf Dogs ahead, and Lucas Coot, another big save on Jordan Nance, who's got three goals, almost had a fourth. He is flattened as he cuts through the, to take that pass. There's the outlet pass. Lucas Coot has five assists. We're gonna have an illegal substitution call against Durham, the first we've seen in this game. And what a time for it to come with 9.01 left in the fourth. Definitely. Oh, wait a second. Is it? Oh, yeah, it is against Durham. So a power play coming for the Cyclops, mm -hmm. who have really had the best of the play for a while here. Absolutely. And uh, like you said, this, this power play couldn't come at a better time for the Cyclops. And, you know, maybe they can see if they can get Dan Keene going. We talk about how he hasn't really gotten into his offensive groove yet. But, uh, you know, the power play has been his bread and butter this year. Ball moving around the outside. Straight over the top. What a shot there. And we have a tie ball game. Not a whole lot to that as Reed Board just very simple. Sorry, that's Brady Hesseltine that time. Just going straight over the top. And it looks like just nice little behind the back pass. And Hesseltine just steps in, or I believe that's Corbett taking the shot. And I mean, if you give a guy that much space, I know you're on the penalty kill, but yeah. you gotta get a stick or something out there, put a little bit of pressure. What a run to get the shot off, but Spanger was on. Dylan Goddard limited his opportunities, and we go back the other way, it's all tied up. Durham really needs to answer. It's picked off. Can they do it here? Backtracking just before he got to the bench is Ward. Hopcroft, he's got a man with him. Puts the shoulder down, goes to his offside. Goddard picked up nicely by Kranz, who actually grabbed his shirt. But uh, the play was going away from them, so uh, no call. Ball is loose. Gage board fighting for it. Ward trying to get it. Oh, what a play by Hopcroft to get that one out. Goddard Ooh. the save by Crawley. Here comes Kranz the other way. That was a great effort by, by uh, Derek Hopcroft. 
The trailer is keen, he's got it. Back behind the back, Kranz drops it. That was a nice pass, a good decision, a good decision generally, but boy, Dan Keen may want to shoot that one if he has another chance. Oh, absolutely. Vradenberg's going to get the ball. St. John right over near him, so Vradenberg will go in on his own. Picked up by Dance. Oh, what a pass. The goal. Oh. Brandon Armstrong cutting to the net, the recent addition to the team. What a play by the Turf Dogs to turn things around and get back in the lead. Welcome to the Durham Turf Dogs. Armstrong, what a great time to score your first goal with the club. And a beautiful feed here. The swim move backs off, can't quite beat his man, but he finds the streaking Armstrong with a beautiful goal to beat Crawley. And like I said, what a better time to come up big for your, for your new team here to take the 9-8 lead with uh, 7.30 left in the game. Yeah, exactly, halfway through the fourth quarter. I'm Steven Stamp with Pat Gregoire. We will take the official's break on the next stoppage. That shot by Spanger comes all the way out high. The pass down by Bergs, but it is picked off. Dylan Goddard has it. They've got some time to get it across center. Nice lead pass. McMahon gets it just before Daly gets there. He's running down along the boards. Hopcroft's on the far side, telling us, oh, that's Ooh. a wayward pass well over the head of all the Turf Dogs defenders. We're going to take the officials' timeout. 7.01 to go. It's 9-8 Turf Dogs. I'm Steven Stamp with Pat Gregoire. We'll be back with the rest of the fourth quarter after this. Welcome back, lacrosse friends, to the GM Center in Oshawa. I'm Stephen Stamp with Patty Gregoire. Gage Board will start with the ball for the Cyclops. They have battled back sometimes. It takes so much energy when you get in a hole to fight your way back, but the Cyclops seem to have plenty. Let us know who you think should be the three stars. At JVI Video, tweet us. We'll take them into consideration. Both goalies, certainly candidates. Jordan Nance with three goals and two assists, and the ball right now for the Cyclops. Passes it down low, across the board. Pike stepping over the top. That shot gets away. Didn't touch anybody, just took off on Keene, who's not having his best offensive night, but Pike, nice job to get on his stick on that one and gets control of it. Mark Farthing was heading down the floor. He's got a couple assists tonight and a great defensive game, and he wanted a break to try and get a big goal oh, yeah. there. There's a pass across, Pike driving to the net, wants to shoot, doesn't have anything. McCrory picks him up, the ball's loose. McCrory will try and get it. Coot reaching in there. Now Farthing taps it back between his legs. What a play smart by the play. captain. Oh, they're gonna say back in. Oh, Maybe not quite as smart as we thought. <laughs> That's a pretty alert officiating call to notice. Absolutely. That Farthing did control that ball back to his goaltender. And he made it almost look like he was trying to scoop it to himself, but you know, the. The officials picked up on it quite quick. Keen stopped by Coot. Coot had about three very good quarters when he played against Barry. They hung on to win in overtime, but they really got to him late. We'll see if he can put an entire 60 minutes together here. As St. John has it on the far side, 15 to shoot. Just under six left in the fourth quarter. There's Armstrong coming back out. Oh, what a goal by Derek Hopcroft. We've talked about how hard he shoots the ball. That one, he's just kind of doing a swim move, getting checked, an awkward off-balance shot, but controlling the head of the stick was the key. Absolutely, and barely 
any space there as well. Like you said, he's, you see here, kind of gets knocked off balance here. Looks like oh. actually Spanger might have even got a stick on the trail check here. Right now there, and it, it, he did. And that actually changed the plane of the shot. What strength by Hopcroft to overcome that check by Spanger. Got a bit of it. And get that twisting of the body. The stick was pretty straight up yeah. and down. It was a, you talk about twisters, that was a body twister. <laughs> yeah. Great call by Hopcroft. Kind of think about him as the three stars. Absolutely. He has played a great game all over. Dance, oh, just taken away by Coot. Baited him into that shot in the top corner and the shrug save. Don't get off my man Lucas Coot, though. <laughs> yeah. Dance, shoots again, saved no. by Coot. Bergsma picks up that loose ball. Runs into traffic, that's gonna be an over and back violation. Yeah, didn't touch a turf dog. And they will take control with 5.01 to go here in the fourth quarter and a two goal lead. Hopcroft, the man of the moment for the turf dogs. Back to Wasson. St. John backing away, comes out to the middle. What a pass. Oh, <laughs> Dylan Goddard, or Vradenberg tried to tuck one far corner. Saved by Grant Crawley. A huge, huge save by Crawley. Kind of, you know, got away from how well he was playing, but, you know, a huge timely save there. Oh, oh. Spencer <laughs> Pike with the shot. I think that might be, is that his second or third tonight? Well, that's a hard shot by Spencer Pike. That's his first. I knew it he's was had a ton numbers. of chances. He has. He's had a ton of chances. And and you see here, nice feed first, and he just steps in, torques that fake, and Wasson completely bites on it. And he just comes in, walks in, rips it right past Cootie. We talk about how good Cootie's played, and that definitely was not a knock against him there. That's just a great, great shot. Yeah, it's 10-9. One... Uh, 4.18 to go, a one goal game. And the Cyclops once again get the ball. Boy, Graham Bergsman has been big getting those possessions for them. Dance with the ball. He's gonna feed it in the middle. Nice D by Farthing once again. And he's tied up with Liam Patton who gives him a shove into the crease and loses his helmet in the process. He'll have to head off. Wasson with it. He's going to feed it up to far th to Vradenberg. There's McNulty over to Wasson. Oh, that would have been a big one, but it's a little bit high and gets away from McNulty. Three and a half minutes to go. 337 exactly. He's going to start in the corner with Gage Board in possession. 10-9 the score, three and a half minutes to go here. I'm Stephen Stamp with Pat Gregoire. This is an exciting Sealax game. Board with the shot saved by Coot. That's gonna go up and somehow get through the mesh behind the net. Did it go right over the top of it? It did, yeah. Oh, right. Board just getting all, mm. that's a pass he's gonna want back. And as I was just about to give him praise, yeah. he's been all over the floor, but not on the score sheet. And that was a perfect chance for him to, you know, make his mark in this game on the score sheet. The Cyclops all over the Turf Dogs. It goes back over and they're gonna say an over and back call. That ball bounces away, it's Oof. into the boards. Armstrong runs over his man, but Dance comes out with it. The pass, the shot by Gates Board to his snake bit. Can't oh, buy one. He does so much for this team, but unfortunately for him, finishing is not on the agenda this evening. St. John trotting down along the boards. Ward comes to him. He cuts to the middle, passes across to the cutter, but can't get to Zabolts as it's picked off by Daly. St. John goes after McMahon, will take Kranz. Kranz spins, McMahon all over him, kind of tugged on the arm, but no call at this point. 2.25 to go here in the fourth quarter. Keen, I thought he was gonna just stop him, but he throws it over to Pike. Oh, and Pike steps in the crease, and boy, he was being watched by Josh Wasson, who looked up the floor, and Pike just took off, and boy, Wasson had to recover quickly. Oh, yeah. Long pass, 
connects with Bergen. Nice play by the alternate captain, Wasson. That's the lob out to McNulty. They're slowing things down here. McCrory takes it. Just under two minutes to play. They've got 12 on the shot clock. McNulty's going to shoot. Saved by Crawley. Scooped up by Bergsma. Boy, Graham Bergsman is getting back to the game he plays so well, eh? Oh, absolutely. He's been all over the floor and just, you know, you talk about how dominant he's been on the X at the face-off circle. He's, you know, he's so valuable when you have a guy that dominant at the face-off position. Dance with the ball, battling with Mark Farthing. There's a drive to the net by Reed Board. He's looking for his third, but stopped by, by Coot. 122 to play. Couple more possessions for the Turf Dogs and they can wrap it up. They want to close things out. Wasson going to the net. Tries to drive low, nice job there. Keeping out by Bryden Curran. Freidenberg hands it off. Wasson will take it. And Nevin Sullivan sprinting to the bench to get some fresh legs. Farthing's just gonna go into his own zone. That ball pops loose. Freidenberg goes after, but a Tesseltine with it. 55 seconds left. Ball knocked out of the, the stick knocked out of the hand by Vradenberg. Now he scoops it up, what a great jumps up, and it's a timeout by Durham. I thought there, I wasn't sure what the call was gonna be. Wow. They call timeout as soon as they got possession. Vradenberg gets the ball, they get the timeout. 48.3 to go. That's such a great hustle play by oh. Vradenberg, being able to not just you know strip the ball, but completely yard sale, pick up the ball, and get that time out. That is huge, huge, huge for this Durham Turf Dogs team right now. You know, up one goal with 48 seconds left. So they're going to definitely want to, you know, kill as much of this clock as they can. Yeah, the uh, 30 seconds they can take off would leave if they use it all. 18 seconds left. At which point, if the Cyclops can get the ball, they can take a timeout, pull Grant Crawley and get the six attackers out, but you've got to get that loose ball off the rebound if there is one. If Crawley can smother it, that'll be the ideal. You know if the Turf Dogs don't get a good scoring opportunity, they're just going to take a late shot down at the leg pads of Crawley to try and bounce the ball out. And boy, this is where I, I would guess the gauge board will be on the floor. He isn't right now, which kind of surprises mm -hmm. me because he's been a loose ball vacuum. Yeah, absolutely he has. You know, I, that's definitely... I was definitely thinking he was going to be there, but I mean, you do have guys like Spanger, uh, Jacob Kranz, Kranz yeah. you know, Brighton Kearns had a pretty strong game for them. It's going to be Dylan Jones, Goddard with Jones the ball Smith and Jordy Jones well. Smith on him. It's a very athletic, big uh, defense here. Goddard swim move, drops the ball, picks it up, scores! I started calling it early. <laughs> I sensed it. Dylan Goddard, what a goal! One ups. Josh Wasson, that makes it 11 to nine. What a play by Dylan Goddard. We talk about how dynamic of a score he is and how he, not afraid, so composed. The guy gets stripped and it, he gets stripped here. You see, you know, Joan Smith doing a great job. Most guys would kind of, you know, get panicked here, but instead he picks the ball up and goes in for a crease dive. And Matt Spanger is mad at himself because he went out over aggressively mm -hmm. and ran past Dylan Goddard when he thought there was a loose ball, but Goddard picked it up so quickly. Now, Graham Bergsman, another face-off win. 36.2 seconds left and they have the timeout to set things up. They are down by two goals. Grant Crawley, I assume, will come to the bench now and stay there. They'll get six attackers out. Wow, what a game. Uh, it's been unbelievable. We huge saves from both ends. You know, Lucas Coot with five points. Yeah. Some great highlight real goals. This has been, you know, nothing short but of entertaining here at the GM Center. And, you know, you look. Let's you look watch at that one goal. again. I Pat. mean, it's definitely worth taking another look. Watch Matt Spanger, number 45, right here, he leaves his man, ball. comes out. Realizes right there. And that's the type of dynamic scorer that Goddard yeah. is, you know, even when he doesn't have the ball in his stick, he's yeah. still a threat. And like I said, any other player, most players, 
when that ball's on the ground, it would look like they're frazzled to get the ball, yeah. but instead he's so calm, cool, and collected. The ball almost pops right back into his stick. Yeah, great hands. In that case, hand, because he picked it up with one hand while he's not warding off, I wouldn't say Jordy Jones-Smith, mm -hmm. but battling him. That stick slides up high on Keene. He's going to shoot oh, off the leg of Nevin Sullivan. He almost ran to the bench, thought better of it, and heads back to pick up Keene. Here comes a shot. That one from Corbett's high. Thanks to, I think it was McCrory got a second. Oh, what a Ooh. shot by Dance over the shoulder, back to the net, and just stopped by Lucas Coot. That was a beauty. And you know what? He, oh, here oh, we the go. the ball's knocked loose. They get it back. Corbett shoots. He stripped the ball and almost got himself a goal. Eight seconds. That's going to do it. Going for it on the fly is Lucas Coot. We said he'd hit it on one <laughs> hop. He almost got it in the air. Lucas Coot wanted the goal to go with the five assists. He won't get it. Let's bump him from where we had him in the stars. We're not going to tell you where he was, but you can probably guess. <laughs> yeah. If you've been watching the whole game, I think you've got a pretty good idea. Absolutely. And, I mean, on that last dance behind the back oh. shot, he actually was beat, but he when he was falling down, he put his glove behind him because mm -hmm. he knew he got beat five hole and had, you know, the awareness to, you know, close up with his hand. Just an unbelievable game by Q. By I think that would have been the goal of the year by Jordan Nance, oh given God. the, I mean, it's a beautiful goal, but given the circumstances, and instead, it's one of the saves of the year. Take a look at this one. Yeah, you, you see right here, and it just kind of finds itself to dance right here, picks it up behind the back, over oh. the shoulder, and Coot, there you go, puts the hand behind the back to keep it out of his own cage, and that's yeah. just one of multiple saves that he made that oh, just blew our heads off. Absolutely fantastic game by Lucas Coote, who uh, may have turned in the goaltending performance of the year in this league so absolutely. far. I mean, it hasn't actually been a, a stellar year for the goalies mm -hmm. for the most part. There have been some good stretches here and there. We haven't seen a lot of complete games because the offensive offenses have just found their way, but yeah. that's as good a game as I've seen. Absolutely. And it's Lucas Coote. We're going to go to the three stars and Patty Gregoire. We're going to see them all come up. So let's talk about our our, uh, our third star is Mark Farthing. And what a game. He only had, he had two assists, but he was fantastic. Up and down the floor. Such a smart game. Such defensive tenacity. Jordan Dance could have had more than five points if he hadn't, if it hadn't been for Farthing and Lucas Coote. Our second star with a five-point night. Jordan Dance, uh, he, was, he was excellent and almost had what would have been a huge sixth one. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that he's had such a big year as well. And, you know, unfortunately for Southwest, you know, it's a loss that looks like it's going to end their season. But he has been a huge part of this uh, Cyclops offense. And our first star, no surprise, <laughs> tied for the league the game lead in scoring with five <laughs> assists is Lucas Coot, but he was sensational between the pipes. Southwest threw everything they had at him, and he was equal to the task and then some. Yeah, absolutely. There's no doubt. And, you know, like you said, it has kind of been an off year for the goalies this year in Sealax, but boy, did he restore, uh, you know, the faith in the goaltendings tonight. You know, that alone, you could put a highlight reel yeah. for the entire season just on his saves alone. And like you said, five assists from a goalie is absolutely Absolutely ridiculous. And they were pretty legit. It wasn't like hand the ball to the guy. No, they were no. mostly on outlet passes. And absolute that's, bombs that's on a rope. It. Yeah. And here's the here's the thing, too. I was actually kind of pulling for him to get that goal at the end <laughs> yeah. because that would have really capped it off. That will do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for being with us. A great game. Remember, there will be more Sealax action on Sunday. I'm Stephen Stamp for Pat Gregoire and the entire JVI Sports Network crew bringing you Canadian Lacrosse League action. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.